hello guys, and today I'm going to be going over another Pack 3 tutorial. Today we are just going to be covering on how to add models, how to change bones, how to do events, and how to work with effects, lights, and sound. So then, we'll begin then. So what you want to do is you just want to open up pack normally. Okay, if you don't know how to do that, what you do, press C, pack editor. I'm going to be making this really simple for all of you guys, so this will be easier on your part. So then, we'll begin. First off, we're going to start to try and add models to our guy. Right click, click on model. You don't need to click anything in here, just click on model, like that. And a white ball should appear. Now we're just going to add a prop to ourselves. So we're just going to give ourselves a lampshade as a hat. We will also be telling you how to apply this to different parts of your body. Now, before you take another step further, what you want to do is where it says model, that's where your model will be, you want to go over to bone, okay? If you, ha if you have a URL, put your URL in the model area. Of course, that didn't save for some reason. There we go. So, go into bone. Find the bone you want to attach it to. For me, I'm going to attach it to head. So, now we have these lines appearing. These lines are going to allow us to move it around. Click on the arrow to rotate, and you click on the circle to move back and forth. The yellow one is just for in a quick sort of drag. It's like, it's, it's, it's easy, but it's kind of awkward to work with. So you can just play around with this. It's very easy to work with. So you've got a hat or something, okay? And you've realized it's too big. You want it to be a bit smaller, okay? This is far too big. Go down to where it says size. And now you can make it smaller. Now, if you've got a really awkward prop, okay? And some sides are bigger than the other, you can use the scale over here. So you've got your width, your length, and your height. If you if you mess around with these and you want to keep it at normal ratios and stuff, just keep it at one. Okay, one's pretty simple for everything because one is the default size. Right then, so we've got our hat sorted pretty much. So then, I'm not going to bother trying to perfect this because really, any you've got plenty of time to perfect this, I don't. I'm just going over the basics here for you. So essentially, that's how you would wear or put on hats. I would go look for a hat model, but I'm not going to bother because that will take time. Right, next up I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and change body parts. So, what you want to do, so say you've got, a, say you found a ragdoll, okay? So you go into your ragdolls and uh, yeah, in one of your add-ons and say you really like uh, we'll say this guy's head so you, well you really like this guy's body but you want to keep his head okay uh, I'm going to do a different one so you want this guy's head okay and you want to keep your guy's body okay there are two ways of doing this okay so you've got your model but first it will look like it's just sticking out the side of his head don't worry that's fine once you've got your model you want to go down a bit, and you want to look for bone merge, okay? It should be in your second tab, okay? So let's just orientation, you go down to underneath bone, it should say bone merge, enable that to true. Now, see how it's just, it's just merged into our body? That's good, that's good, okay? Now, you want to right click it, and create a bone, okay? So you want to hover over model, click on bone, okay? Now, this is this is so we can keep the head. Okay, so just bear with me on this. So where it says male, or whatever your model would be called, make it smaller, okay? So where it says size, okay? You have to do this when it's bone merge. It won't work in any other way, okay? So... Shrink it down until you can no longer see any of the body, okay? However, do not make it zero, okay? Make it a low number, 
but not make it zero, okay? 0 0.01 will do it even, but do not make it zero. If you make it zero, you won't be able to do anything with it. So you, then you go back over to head. Then you go down to size, and you increase it as size, okay? Make it to a reasonable size. Nothing too big, nothing too small, okay? 9.5 will do me for this one. So my body, I've made that 0.1. The head, I've made 9.5. That's if you want to use this model. So now, right click again, and you want to create an entity, okay? Now, you make a bone come off of this. Now that's your head bone. Make that smaller. Make this bigger. And there you go, you've just changed his head. And it looks alright. However, if you do not like the model you're using, and you want to do it a different way, you can easily revert this back to 9.5, remove this entity, like you don't need the entity at all, so say you want to actually like put a different model on, and you don't want to see that model, okay, you create an entity, so you want to get rid of this body, so what you do is you click on hide entity, that will hide the body and it will show you this skimpy ass model. Next, you want to go up here, create a new model, and you want to do exactly the opposite of what you did for this guy down here. So say I want to use this guy's body. I'll bone merge him again. Yeah, if you can, try, <laughs> if you can try and find a, a model with similar bones, so we won't use this one because that just looks like he's got a massive erection. So try and find one with similar bones. There we go, this one's got similar bones. So um, I want to use this guy's body. What I would do is I would size... Oh, what did I just do? Oh, it didn't work properly, that's why. Okay, then you want to size his body down. Well, not size his body down, sorry. Leave his body as it is. You want to... You want to create a head. So... Model, bone, head. Then, guess what? You just size the head down. Now, you can make the head zero if you want. It doesn't really matter too much on this one. However, you've got to make sure the body isn't zero, otherwise it won't work. Right then. So that's how you change bones, okay? Also, here's a little tip, uh, trick you can use as well. Someone's talking to you in-game, but you can't because you're in pack, and you don't want to exit your pack because you're working hard on it. Press Control e What it'll do is it'll... It will keep you in pack, you can move around, you can talk in game, you can press X, you can jump, crouch, walk, etc. So you can do whatever you need to do in game. Then just press Ctrl E again to bring it back up. So then, next we're going to move on to events. So I'm just going to clear this, okay? So, first thing we're going to do with the events is we are going to try and add in so if we wanted to add in buttons, like if we had a key on our computer that we want to press that will enable something, we can do that. I'm not too sure on what if every key works. I am well aware that the uh, letter keys work. So use them, use the letter key, so the letter P for example, just type in P. Right then, so what you want to do is you want to create an event. Where it says event down here hover over this, and look for button. Okay. Next, you want to type in the button you want to do. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable a custom animation with a button I press. So, I'm going to do the letter P. Press enter. Now, if you're doing this on a completely new pack, so you've already got your model sorted, and you don't want to... Right, and all, everything just hides... If, if you're doing... Let me rephrase that. If you're on a, a pack that you've already made, okay, you've got loads of models and everything disappears once you've created this uh, event, that's because of these little buggers down here, okay? For some reason, Root Owner and Effect Children are always, like, t enabled like this. So what you want to do is you want to, like, switch them around. This is false. This is true. Okay? Now, all of your pack will reappear when you press where. I'm not going to press where because I've got no pack on right now. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to go down to where it says effects. No, not effects. It's 
entity, sorry. You want to go into entity, click on animation or whatever you want to hide, okay? So what will happen is whilst... So essentially this is what it is. So imagine you've got yourself a door, for example. Okay, you've got a door here. Until you open that door, you can't see anything on the other side of it. But when you open that door, you can see what's on the other side. Okay, that's how this works. This is a door, pretty much, okay? And when you open this door, or trigger the event, you'll be able to see whatever is here. If you wish to invert this, so when you press a button, you can then unsee what you're doing. So it's a constant animation until you press a key. You would go down to invert and tick that to true. But we're not going to do that, so we're going to leave that as false. Now we're going to look for an animation. You want to go down to sequence name and look for an animation. For me, I'm going to make my animation a gesture. So, I'm going to do this one. Okay. Now, it will do this for some reason. I don't know why it does this. Let me just find what's up with it. There we go. Press invert. And I forgot that's my kill key. <sighs> Isn't this just great? Let me just quickly hop out of pack. Yeah, if you uh, if you go back into pack whilst you've pressed control E, it will bug out a bit. So you just close it and go back into it again. So We've got our gesture, okay, and we've inverted it. Ignore what I said earlier, okay, you want to just switch that around. Okay, so I'm just going to unbind. Actually, I'm going to just change the key in general. It'll be a lot easier. So, um, I essentially don't make it P, okay? It'll, for me, don't make it P because that's my kill key. So I'm going to make it O. So whenever I press O... Right, now most people will be thinking, Hey, oh, that's an that animation is going far too fast. Why don't you just slow it down a bit? Well, we'll do that. We'll slow it down a bit. Because personally, I think this animation is a bit too quick. So, I'm going to change it. Right now, to change it, what you want to do is you want to go into animation. And you want to go tick loop false. So that when you, pr when you play it, it will only do it once. Okay. Uh, ping pong is basically... It will it will do the animation and then it will put it in reverse. See, can you notice how his hand goes up and then goes down? See, that's what ping pong does. It's it's an it's an all right animation um, toggle. I don't use it often, and we'll just change this to sitting down or something because I'm not a big fan of that animation actually. You know. Yeah, we'll just do walk suitcase. It'll be a lot easier. Actually, no. We'll, we'll do something else. We'll just see what animations there are. Okay? We'll just see what animations there are. Um, let me see. Ch -ch -ch. There we go, this will do. It's the uh, it's the original one. So essentially, what this animation is doing is it's signalling people to come over here, but what we want us to do is we want it to slow this down because that is far too quick. Now the rate, you want to make this quite a low number. Okay, but not so low. If you make it too low, let's see how weird that looks. Okay, just make it, just experiment, okay? Make it a low number, but not too low. And it's a very sensitive thing. There we go, that'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll stick with that for now. So then, that's how you do events for buttons. Next up on the events, how to make holstered weapons. So... You're just browsing through your inventory or your weapons and you see a really nice weapon that you wish to put on your back. So for example, oh I really like this um Oh let's just let's just do a CSGO knife. 
So I really like this CSGO knife. Okay, so I've got a tiger tooth. I really like this knife because it just looks nice. I've always been a fan of butterfly knives. Um, so yeah, say we want to do that. What we want to do is you want to create an event, okay? Just a normal event. Then, in the event, you want to search for weapon class. Again, root owner false, effect children only true, invert where. Now, we'll create a model. You're probably thinking, well, sometimes it doesn't work if you have it inverted. See how this is what we want to do. We want to have the item hidden, but we so that when we press, well, when we actually hold the weapon, what will happen is this will hide. However, we're not going to do that this time around, okay? We're going to have the invert, invert on just so we know where we're going to actually put in our model. So next up, we're going to need to find, you are going to need to find the model pathway for your weapon. So if you're using a TFA weapon, you'll look for the TFA files. If you're using an M9K, you'll look for the M9K files. If you're using a CSGO thing, you'll look for the CSGO files. So I'm going to quickly just see if I can find the CSGO things. If not, then I will just quickly use something else. So I can't see the CSGO knife folder. So... Oh, here they are. So, where is the... There we go. There's the butterfly knife. We have our butterfly knife. Now, uh, I believe it's in skins, okay? I'll have a look, see if it has any skins. Yeah, there we go. So, come come down to skin. It's in the uh, this orange tab here. If I don't actually close all of them. It's in appearance, okay? You want to go into appearance. And you want to look for skin. Okay, and then just browse the skin that you want. Yeah, this works for any weapon that has a skin on. So we'll, we'll get this tiger too. Say we want to have this holstered onto our knee or your, our thigh. So we'll go up to bone. Okay. No, not model. Bone. And we'll morph it to our... Not our left calf because that's this bit down here. Yeah, just be careful when, on what you... Merge, merge your bones too. Uh, we'll have it on our left thigh. Okay. Now we're just going to move this around a bit. Just so it looks all nice and neat on our thigh. And here we are. Uh, this will pretty much do. Yeah, this will do. So, if we just, if we were to come off of our, well, we haven't actually set our weapon yet, but that's what it will look like when we're hold, when when we're not holding our knife. That will, that's what it will look like. You can, of course, use different models or different weapons if you want. Okay. Next up, in the weapon class, we haven't set anything. Okay. What you want to do is you want to go into your weapons tab and you want to find the weapon. Okay. So this is the weapon we're using. Okay. We're not going to click on it because we don't need to. We already have it. Right click on it and click copy to clipboard, okay? Go back into pack and where it says find control V. Okay? That's what we want to do. So then when we come off of it, see how it disappears? Yeah. Then we just untick invert. Okay? Now it's there. So if we're just fighting and we need to change knives, bam, it's there. Easy. That's how you add holstered weapons on using events. Okay, next up on the agenda, we're going to go over lights, effects, and sounds. Okay, now to make life a lot easier for the sounds, I do advise you get the wire mod, look for the sound emitter, and then use the sound browser because it is a really handy tool. Okay, I promise you. Okay, you don't need to do anything with the actual tool itself, but it's just handy to have because it makes searching for sounds a lot easier instead of going onto the internet and just finding the stuff you need. So, if you just want to, like, you can use any events I've used today. Today I'm just going to be showing you how to add effects, light and sounds. Right click, go in into effects. You can't click on this one like you can with model. You have to go into effects to get an effect, okay? 
So if you want fire, for example, or fireworks. Effects can be quite buggy and can be a little annoying. So untick follow for me, and then as you can see, it is quite buggy. It won't follow you all the time, it will just update every now and then. So that's how you can do it. You can also change the bone of it. You can also choose where you, whether you want it to loop or not. So you can choose whether you want it to... Well, an unticking loop will just mean it will just stay there, really. Of course, I think you can change the rate of it and it might follow you. No, it won't. Yeah. I'm not... I don't really use effects that often, so... That's why you don't really see me actually using tutorials. Well, yeah, I suppose that works. I just lower the rate down so it's a lot better and it follows you then. So yeah, just lower the rate down. I think if you make it 0 or 0 0.1, that might work. And it'll follow you permanently, maybe. Yeah, that, that works. So, that's how you can work with effects. You can play around with this. You don't have to always do what I do. However, I do advise you play around with it. That's how you get effects on. Next up, you want to go over to effects again. Okay, and we're going to add a sound in. So, this is everything you'll need to know for the sounds, okay? So, you've got your volume. You can just make that as loud as you want. It doesn't make no difference. Your pitch, that makes it higher. That makes it lower. So, we're going to go into the sound browser. And we're going to look for a sound that we like, okay? So, um, let's have a look through then. Uh, let's go. Let's go over and get ourselves an NPC voice. Okay. So, if you want a voice of an NPC, you go into Voiceover. Okay, and then you just look for NPC. Click the plus. This is where you can get most of them are. So we'll just have a look, see what there is. We never dreamed to meet you in corporeal form. We dedicate ourselves to your purpose. So we'll just use this one. Copy to clipboard, and just close this down. So, next up we want to do is you want to go back into pack, and then you want to go into sound, control V, okay? We dedicate ourselves to your purpose. We to your yeah, some sounds as well will allow you to uh, just play them through his voice as well. So yeah, you can just play around with this. I think the highest it goes is 8. I'm not too sure. Yeah, that's as high as it goes. It won't go any higher. And then the lowest you can go is up to zero. Now this is quite creepy, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, you can do that as much as you want. Um, so you can go into an event that I did earlier with a button or something. What what me and my friends tend to do is we'll look for a dog sound in the uh, Half-Life files and what we'll do is we'll get that dog noise and then we'll just play it. So then, next up we are going to go over the last thing of them all is lights. Okay, so if we have a flashlight, for example, so I'm going to go find us a flashlight model. Because there's plenty, and I know exactly where one is, so 
we're just going to go get ourselves a flashlight model. You don't have to do this. Um, you can just skip ahead a little bit if you don't want to see this bit. I'm just going to go do it because, personally, I think it just adds a bit more emphasis. So we're just going to put a flashlight onto our shoulder. So left upper arm is what we're going to apply it to. And uh, that crowbar is really starting to annoy me now. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of that. There we go. Right, you can already see the light that we spawned in a minute ago. So yeah, we're just going to put that there. There we go. Now, there are two ways you can do this, okay? You can make the light become a child. Now to do that, you just drag it onto it. And now it's part of the flashlight. So you can just move that forward and you're done. Or you can just move it around manually from the head, make its bone the shoulder, and then just move it around there. Personally, it's a lot easier if you just do it the way I'm doing it. Then increase the size just to make the light a bit brighter. Of course, you can change the color if you really want to. So you can have a red light. Of course, that's a bit too vibrant, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And yeah. That's how you would go about just doing lights. So I'm going to go find a dark place on the map and I'm going to show you this, okay? So I'm just going to go find... Uh, ooh, where's a dark place in this map? Because I'm just playing... I just chose this map because I liked how big it was. Uh, we'll go into this uh, apartment complex over here. Actually, no, we'll go, we'll go into this warehouse. This warehouse will do. And then we'll just go into this corner over here. So then, we're just going to go into pack, and if we was, you can also use the events to actually make the flashlight work if you want. Of course, I'm not going to do that, it's really easy, just look for the event is flashlight on, and then just use the rest of the things I've been talking about in this tutorial, and that's how you go about adding stuff in onto your pack. I have no idea. Wait. Never mind. Um, yeah, that's that's how you do some basics in pack then. Okay. Thank you for watching, and I expect to see you come back for another tutorial at some point. Okay, this will be the second tutorial. I'm not sure how many I'm going to do with these. I'm just going to do them, though, in like small parts. If you want to see anything in particular, just comment down below. I will tell you how to do it. However, I am, I am sort of all right at pack. I'm not a pro, however I'm pretty good at it. So I do not know anything in the advanced. I do not know how flex or pose parameter works. I do not know how halo, jiggle or physics works. I do not know how um, proxy works. I do not know how... Um, I think I know how a beam works, but I'm not too sure. I don't know how sunbeams work, and I stay away from group, just don't use groups. They, they just overcomplicate things. Yeah, that's about it. I can show you some of my work, though. I'll just show you something I do work on often. Um, we'll, we'll go on this one. Not this one, sorry. Uh, this one will do. So, if we just... Uh, come over into the light a bit and we fly over here this is something I have worked on okay this is for uh, raw marine and then if I was to give myself a, uh, a um, what's it CW rifle let me just find it it works on L85s see how it disappears I have I, I do work on stuff like this. I'm very good when it comes to military stuff. But yeah, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.